Chairman, Dr. Sabet, thank you for traveling up here today and being with us, Dr. Fletcher. Thank you. Um, obviously, this is a societal issue across the nation that's being grappled with. But I want so let me go down to a very small level, execution and operational level uh, concern of mine as it relates to legalization. So I'm in the concrete industry. We have people that take tractor trailers, very heavy tractor trailers, big loads um, up and down the interstate all the time. Um, and I, you know, I, al I always have a degree of liability as an employer and my employees have a degree of liability for their actions behind the wheel. Um, my concern is this. I sit in northern Kentucky, uh, same county with Dr. Fletcher. We border Indiana and Ohio, which obviously have different um, frameworks than we would particularly. What are we looking at in terms of criminal or civil liability on the personal or corporate level, or what have we seen? Um, because it, it, frankly, it terrifies me that in the event you have somebody with a perfectly legal prescription, they cross the center line and they kill somebody or they injure somebody, there are levels of liability on a personal and corporate level. And what does that look like? And what about when you start crossing state lines with a commercial driver's license? It's obviously is federal um, with a product that's not, you can see where as an employer, you know, and you're a small employer like me, you got 50 folks and it's a lot to juggle. And so I just looking for some commentary on what that looks like. You want me to take that? Well, Senator, it's a very complex issue and a very important one that you brought up. In fact, I just came from speaking to a national group of roofers uh, from around the country, the biggest roofers in the country who are very concerned with, first of all, a difficult labor pool in terms of, you know, <laughs> the flip side of low unemployment uh, is that it's very hard to find good labor, especially laborers and, and workers. And number two, finding ones that can, frankly, pass a drug test and um, that aren't having to deal with things like probation, parole, drug testing all the kinds of things in the middle of the day that you have to deal with when you're dealing with your actual business. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball on how this will affect it. I can tell you in other states, uh, it, there's a mishmash of lawsuits that have happened. I would say regularly lawsuits are happening on the liability front, either by employees who claim to be discriminated, by employers who uh, you know, claim that there have been a damage to their business as a result of drug use, mainly often with marijuana. Um, this is a huge issue from a business perspective, and I advise businesses, I'm not a lawyer, but I, first of all, I say, please consult a lawyer, but I also say there are drug-free workplace programs and things that you can try and do on the front end uh, with regards to regular testing uh, and uh, maintaining a drug-free workplace, but in an environment where someone thinks that what they have is first of all legally prescribed. It is never legally prescribed. So until the Controlled Substances Act happens, using the word medical prescription is a misnomer. It's in, in any state, whether it's here, California, it's a recommendation. Uh, and so, because a prescription implies a legal prescription pad, DEA, FDA approved, you can't do that unless you have a marijuana improved product, those couple that I showed you today earlier. But uh, with most of this stuff, it's not a prescription. So it's very messy. And you're going to be sitting in a lot of law offices discussing this, um, unfortunately, as it goes forward. It's very difficult. I don't have a better answer for you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman.